Hi, and welcome to this table podcast unboxing episode of the Horus Heresy Betrayal of Kelth. Ooh. Really excited by this release. Um, I've been playing Heresy now for a good 18 months, two years, um, with the Forge World 30k releases. Um, and I'm really excited that Games Workshop are now doing this in plastic. So I just wanted to um, open the new game that's just come out um, as this video is released, if you like. Um, and also get my first impressions along with your first impressions as, as we basically see what's in there. So, Horus Heresy Paternal Kelth, still sealed as you can see. Um, so for those who don't know, um, the Horus Heresy is obviously 10,000 years before uh, Warhammer 40,000. And it is basically where half of the Space Marine Legions, half of the Imperium decided basically, um, well not decided, they got corrupted by chaos and decided they could do a better job than the Emperor and they should rule the galaxy. Uh, and Horus, the Primarch of the Sons of Horus, who were the Lunar Wolves. Um, obviously, it is heresy, the Horus heresy, hence the name. Um, Kelth is one of the major battles between the Ultramarines and the Word Bearers. It's one of the major battles of the Horus heresy. So, really, really quick in the background is um, the Word Bearers and Lorgar, their Primarch, were humbled by the Emperor. Um, basically, who told them to you know stop worshiping me as a god? I'm not a god. There's no such thing as religion. We're on science now, and that was the whole point of the Great Crusade. Um, and by eliminating religion, hopefully, he would protect humanity from uh, the chaos gods. Was the intention? So, but he used the Ultramarines as basically as part of this humbling technique. So when it came to the Horus Heresy and Kalth. Um, Guliman, who's the Primarch of the Ultramarines, was basically trying to use it as an opportunity to build bridges again with his brother and another legion. And obviously the great betrayal happened. Um, the Ultramarines were the biggest legion in terms of sheer weight of numbers. Um, and this is the betrayal of Kalth. So what basically happened is a, in a real short summary, if you want the real story, you're best getting the um, heresy novels, particularly No No Fear. That really tells you all about it and stuff. But in essence, the word bearers were blowing up a sun. That sun was going supernova. That was above Kalth. Kalth is where they were mustering together with the Ultramarines. I meant to be taking on, and I think it was the orcs they were taking on. Uh, and then obviously the betrayal of Kalth happened. So as far as I'm aware, this game um, is set in the Underground War. Um, again, if you have a look at the... Um, the Horace Heresy books, there is a uh, Calf book as well, which tells you the, the stories of these guys. And basically what happened is this went on for years and years after the, even the Horace, Horace Heresy finished, where they ran out of ammunition and basically Ultramarines and Word Bearers were hunting each other underneath the surface of Calf, the counter and knives and hand-to-hand -hand combat and all the rest of it. So let's have a look. So the game the box contains the rule book, some board tiles, uh, 42 reference command cards, so, sorted cards with 12 dice. There's 38 models. This is mainly why most people are buying it. Uh, you've got the Terminator Captain, or Praetor. You've got the uh, Chaplain. You've got the Contemptor Dreadnought. You've got five uh, Terminators. And you've got 30 Mark IV Marines. Um, which, if you've never played Heresy, sounds like a lot. But actually, because you can have squads of 20, it doesn't actually come to that much of it. So, oh, the exciting bit. Let's get this open. Yeah. That's what I wanted to see. So, let's have a look inside the box. Uh, I will say, just before we start, it is not as heavy as I was expecting. Um, I did pick up Space Hulk when that was re-released uh, last year. And that, I'd say, is two or three times heavier than this. So, I just wanted to say that anyway. So... Obviously, grease by a wall of plastic. Um, I'm going to come back to the plastics only because I think that is what most people, including myself, want to see. So let's see what we've got. So we've got 12 dice. Um, and these are the new dice for it. So we've basically got um, a miss. We have shield sides, which is what this is. We have hit sides and we have critical hits. So it's basically like rolling dice. Instead of saying a four up, you know, four up to hit, you can roll your dice. Oh, that's shields. Roll your dice and basically say, well, say the four ups to hit. Um, you just need a hit, basically. It's the same thing as it, as it works out in terms of the game style. 
so we'll see how that works out. Bases, a lot of bases. They are 32 mil um, bases. Obviously for all the Marines, there's a couple of 40s on there. Is it a big one for the Dreadnought? I assume. Oh, there he is hiding away. There's the big one for the Dreadnought. So he's in there as well. Uh, I'll open the cards in a second. We'll come back to that. So we've got some uh, cardboard tiles. Um, this is what we actually play on, and these are your um, tokens that you use as part of the game. Um, they are obviously thick cardboard. Let's see if we can get one of these open. I may have to go and get a, a knife to open this. There we go. If in doubt, use your teeth. Oh, don't do that. That's health and safety. Pardon me. So, oh, they are double sided. So, obviously, in essence, you get four double sided, you get eight. Um, and this is what you're playing on. The reds are basically zones that you can't go into. The dotted is like rubble, so you can run down and hide in there while you're playing, get some cover from that. Um, and these boards obviously all match together, and that's how you get your battlefield. Okay, if you've played um, Space Hulk, it's basically the same high quality, you know, good thick strong cardboard. They should last a very, very long time. Um, so we've got the Horus Heresy. This. I assume, yeah, this is the um, the book of how to put all your models together. Um, and obviously it covers things like the options that you've got. And this is one of the surprising things I'd say about this set, is that you actually get a lot of options of how you arm them. Um, so we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> got some nice bags. <laughs> Why not? And I've got a Horus Heresy transfer sheet. Uh, obviously, you only get the um, Ultramarines and the Word Bearers who are meant to be the troops from the box. In, it is interesting that the shoulder pads and um, what they've got are Legion specific. They're not the like arrows and diamonds and triangles that we see in 40k. Um, some of them obviously you can use for any generic Legion, like Terminator Shields with skulls, fine. Um, double arrows, fine. Obviously, you can't use things like that. Um, a lot of the word bearers is chaos wording, um, so you could use some of it, but really what you're after, if you want to paint any particular legion, is get onto Forge World and get the proper ones for it. So, the trailer calf. So this is the rule book. Already I can see it's very, very similar. Oh, I like that. It's very, very similar to the um, Horus Heresy books. If I try and grab one of my Horus Heresy books, uh, so this is one of the proper Forge World ones, and you can see as we open it, do you know what I mean, you can just see the forward, it's exactly the same as it goes in, the colours, the styles, it's exactly the same, so they've done a really good job trying to match the genuine Forge World ones. So what contents we've got. It's a bit of introduction obviously about how to play the game. We've got Brother Against Brother, so a bit of a story, a bit of lore. Um, go through obviously the miniatures, the board, which is important if you want to, if you want to play the game. Just get that in the, into frame. Reference cards. So probably this time, it's probably worth opening these reference cards. So again, shouldn't probably use my teeth, but there you go. I'm going to because I should have prepared these earlier. Um, mm. You have to forgive me. If in doubt, get your Games Workshop Clippers. There you go. Um, on a side note, I really like these Games Workshop Clippers. I know a lot of people say they're expensive and they are for what you get, but I really just like the quality of them. They are quite quite a solid piece of kit, shall we say. So, let's get these cards open and see what we've got coming here. Squad Command. So, Ultramarines. So there's Ultramarine Command Cards, we'll see what they do in a second. We've got Word Bearers Command Cards. And then we've got... Oh! <laughs> this is quite funny. Um, so this is for the Dreadnought, um, whose name is Saw Garax, for the um, Word Bearers. And if you play them properly, <laughs> depending on where you hit him, he has damage in his left leg, with an effect, his right leg, uh, his right weapon arm, his left weapon arm, Sarcophagus and is a, a tomant, atomantic power core. 
subtract two from the value of each location. Okay, so you must be able to damage them in a particular place. Um, but there are six reference cards, which I'm hoping. Yeah, here we go. Now these bad boys. So let's see what we've got here. So armor value represents how well protected they are. So we've got obviously armor five for a Terminator, armor two for a um, normal Marine. We've got stamina, um, a measure for how models resilience to harm. Again, Terminators are better, stamina three as opposed to stamina two for a Marine. Uh, assault value is uh, how good they are in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Assault three, assault three, so, oh, sorry, assault two. So again, Terminators are better. And bulk is the size and how many can go in a hex. So obviously Terminators take up more room and stuff for him. So we should have um, some of the things. And then these are the character ones. So we've got three, four, um, what I think of your box standards. We've got some character ones and we've also seen to have certain ones for the Dreadnoughts. Um, we've got a lot of tokens, obviously, or the components, how we need to play. General principles and playing the game. It does seem a very simplified version of 40k. It does seem, um, from the demo game, I've, I've seen that if you've never played 40k before, it's a great place to start. If you have played it, you'll pick it up really easy um, without being, I don't want to use the term AOSified, but without being oversimplified, if you like. So we can go through it. Um, obviously, different weapons have different effects. These are the damage cards we were talking about before. Nice, I really like these. And obviously they are the proper, what I think is the proper heresy weapons. So like the missile launcher looks very old school, like a shark and stuff. I really like that. Uh, for my own heresy army, I do actually have 20 of them. I really like that weapon. Um, scenarios, obviously this is a big thing. Um, so the first scenario, what I was talking about before, about how the betrayal happened, the word bearers basically pumped a lot of weapons into the local sun to basically make the sun go supernova. So the first part of the story is basically get below ground, get behind the blast doors. You need to survive as much as you can with your troops. Uh, flood the vaults, basically. Um, you're trying obviously to stop people on underground. <laughs> Knives in the gloom, as I was saying about before. You, you know, eventually led down to hand-to-hand -hand combat because you ran out of ammunition. So you should have six, and I think there's a new one in White Dwarf. I need to check as well. A bit of artwork. Oh, nice. Destiny and Flames. So, ah, right, so it gives you, if you've never read the Heresy, it gives you an overview of what the Great Crusade's about, an overview of the Heresy. Um, I'm trying to work out what league that is. Iron Hands? Empress Children, Iron Hands. Oh, so this is um, Istvan. So, this is the actual battle. It even tells you things like scattering the Primarchs, which is quite nice. The Battle for Kalth tells you all about it. A bit about the Ultramarines, I assume a bit about the word bearers, yeah. And obviously the characters who are in here. You can obviously paint them as these characters or you can paint them however you like. Um, and then how to pick up the rest of the stuff. This is actually quite nice because it's, again, it's a good way to get into Heresy if you've never played. And a little reference sheet as well. So let's have a look at these models. This is really what we're all interested to see. So this is the Terminator. Yeah, so this is the Terminator. Oh, and. Oh, this is both characters. This is both leaders and stuff. So, this looks obviously quite strange. Do you know, I'll put the white box on this. You can see it a bit easier and stuff. So, um, they are in two halves, but I've seen this before on some of the old Warhammer characters when they count on plastics. And while they're not snap fit, you look at them and you think, how the hell does that work? But once you put them together, really, really nice models. I mean, the detail's fantastic, particularly when you think these are plastic, not resin ones, um, and how much you pay for the resin ones of them. So, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, let's have a look at some of the Marines. So these have got the Marines. You've got obviously a choice of heads up here. Um, obviously your backpacks, your bodies, your normal Marines. You've got a choice here. I can see a couple of power fists, for example. Um, special weapons, different arms. You've got your legs. They are Mark IV um, variety. You've got the studded ones, um, which actually were... When the armor's weaker, they have to reinforce with studs. So if you actually see that, when you actually read the story, it's not because they're better armor, it's because it's actually worse armor, which is why you see the studs stud the bits. So you get two of them. This is obviously a Dreadnought, so it's one piece with the arms. Now, I think 
Possibly. I mean, they're solid arms, but you might be able to pick up the arms separate from Forge World. I think you can, and obviously substitute and try and magnetise them, but you actually get enough different arms here um, to make a few different combinations, which is very nice. Um, some more Marines. I assume this is where we get um, a new box set once this has all been out released. But you've got um, the missile launcher. You've got, obviously got plasma guns here. Missile launcher, heavy bolters. You can see all the shoulder pads, they are not Legion marked. The legs, not Legion marked. The chests, not Legion marked. Um, not Legion marked and stuff. So it is Mark IV. The helmets, Mark IV. There's no Legion mark. So, you can, so again, just to confirm, you can paint these up in any way. So you get one sprue for the Terminators. <clears throat> uh, again, these are not Legion marked. You can, for £10, get genuine um, Legion specific. Shoulder pads from Forge World uh, for Cataphracty Terminators. If you are going to paint them up, you know I would recommend it. It just makes it look a little bit better. Um, but again, you don't have to. They are unmarked. You can paint them however you want. Um, you've got your bolters. You've got lightning claws, chain fist, chain fist, <laughs> lots of power fist, power sword, um, heavy flame. I'm looking for. There's some blind heavy flamer. There it is. Heavy flamer there. Um, Again, for me, I'm going to paint this up as Death Guard, um, and they will be using the flame because it's shred. So just before we leave, these are the command cards. Um, they are specific to each of the armies that you get. Obviously, if you decide to play the scenarios with different armies, which is absolutely possible, you can use different legions, especially because in the uh, Heresy there were that many battles over the 10-year period. I say 10 years, roughly a decade or so, um, that... In reality, you could replicate this battle on a number of worlds with a number of legions stuff, but you won't be able to use the exact cards because obviously they will be tailored just for word bearers, ultramarines. So, word bearers, um, it gives you special things to do with rads, not rads, with rad grenades. I've just seen there, but they're just little bonuses that sort of tailor into the fluff. Uh, and the same with um, ultramarines. I can already see some of the names: precision strikes, fire solution, squad tactics, discipline. Grenades, concentrated fire and stuff. So you can use those party tactics. So overall, you get quite a lot for your money. You've obviously got the um, the game itself, the new rules. There's a bit more fluff in there, a bit of law, um, how it goes. You've got all the bases, you've got all the new cards, and you've got all the bodies, all the dice, and a lovely box to keep it all in. And I'm really looking forward to getting all these painted up uh, and a few games played. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments. Cheers, thanks. Bye.